And the, the interesting part is it sounds like during the beginning, um, I think you said you were actually working for a company and you were doing so well that they thought they needed to fire you because you wouldn't accept the jo a new job that they were going to be offering you. Did I, yeah. did I hear that right? You did hear that right. It doesn't make much sense to the average person. It didn't make much sense to me at the time either. Um, at that point in time, I'd run series of businesses at a young age unofficially. I'd worked very hard for various people um, from a coming up from a background of where you you worked hard for your money. That's how it worked. Um, so I'd actually never been employed in a day in my life, and I prided myself on this fact. I'd always talked about it. How you know, I quit several jobs, but I'd never been fired, and they knew that. Um, the job they actually offered me, even though they told me they I could run their business better than them, even though they told me, by the way, this was a small company, I was their only graphic designer, they had one sales rep and they were the partnership, the couple that was running it. And they basically wanted me to do their job. And I'm like, well, you've got one sales rep, you've got one graphic designer, like I'm doing your job. But they were going to call it admin. In other words, they were going to pay me half the rate of a graphic designer to basically manage their business. So they knew I would never accept a pay cut, um, they wanted to start part-time, they knew I'd never want to go from full-time to part-time, but they also knew because I mentioned about, you know, little kid, big head, oh yeah, I've never been unemployed a day in my life, I'm so hireable, you know. And at one stage I actually had 200 job offers come in the same day, like I really had a big head, so just to be honest with you, like know where I've come from. Um, so yeah, that's what they said to me. They said, we know you would never accept this unless you were unemployed, so you're no longer working for us as a graphic designer. Would you like the admin job? Okay, so that really was, and that that's part of what I was getting at, is because sometimes in business, people, we as business owners and entrepreneurs, sometimes our rationale makes sense to us, but it doesn't make sense to anybody else. And sometimes, yeah. you know, our clients' rationale makes sense to them, but it doesn't make sense to us or anybody else. So in their mind, they really thought that, it sounds like, if I can, if I can translate for a second, it sounds like they really thought that once they fired you, you weren't going to be able to find a job, and that they were going to kind of exactly. almost force you into accepting this this other position and be able to cut your pay and and give you different and more responsibilities, kind of like what clients do. Kind of interestingly enough, probably kind of like what even some book publishing clients of yours do and, you know, clients all of people do it all the time. Yep. We're, we're, Can I get more out of you for less money? <laughs> well, and they put you in a situation where, and I guess that's the point I'm really trying to bring out about your beginning is you were put in a situation where the person you were dealing with really felt that they were putting you in a situation that they had control. And what you did was you stood your ground and you said, no, nah, I don't, you know, I don't think so. That's fine. You can, you know, I'll, I'll quit or you can fire me or, or what have you. And I'm just going to go do something, do something better. I mean, is that, is that a good characterization? Uh, yeah, it's a really good summary. Cool. And that, like I said, that kind of, so do you think it, uh, do you think that lesson applies also in business? Like when a client comes to you and, you know, I'll totally. also maybe tries to lowball you or something like that. Yeah, totally. But both ways. Like indirectly, they tried to fire me. I quit, but I could say I fired my boss. People say that all the time. They fire their boss. They open their own business. You can fire your clients as well. If you don't like the way they are treating you and it happens to me actually quite a lot because as I grow and develop my business, I'm going a different direction. I've got clients that are pushing me a direction I don't want to go. So you do, you have the choice. And you don't have to be mean or cruel about it, but you can say things like, oh, sorry, we don't do that kind of work anymore, or I've actually got such and such to recommend you to that might be better to help you out with this. You don't have to take on the work you don't want to. Yeah. So I think it's interesting. And it's also don't, you know, regardless of what situation you're in, financially or otherwise, do everything you can to prevent people from painting you into a corner and from really, you know, yeah holding something over you because once they do it once you don't know what they're you know they're they're likely to do it again and again and again exactly right? and so, if you refer to it as you did kind of like pushing you into a corner you've only got so many corners in the room if you've got customers cornering your left hand center you can't service the rest of your customer base so you need to be available like I now run, um, we'll get to that later, a fully virtual, fully automated business. 
Now that means I've got all my time up my sleeve to fill in what I want. If I want to fill it in with, for example, lead generation methods or I want to fill it in with cross-promotional discussions, if I've got those kind of customers hanging around that want to fill it in with an hour phone call every day discussing what's going wrong in their life and how I can fix, that's not how I want to fill it in. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And then you can choose and you can be flexible because there might be times where you want to fill it in with, with hours upon hours of just trying to fix what's going on in other people's lives. And then there's times you want to fill it in with lead generation generation where, you know, like I, I know now, I, you know, there's a number of face groups, you know, right now I'm, you know, as we're recording this, I'm a little bit bigger into doing some help on Facebook. So I'm out on Facebook groups yep. a long time during the day, you know, just to help some people get ahead. And there's going to be times where I'm going to be completely non-existent doing that because there'll be different things going on. Yeah, exactly. So what else from the beginning, the beginning phase? And it's interesting because we're probably going to elongate the turning point because you really had two turning points. The one was when you got fired because yeah. that's what switched you into a business. And the second one was the, you know, it was kind of like the roller coaster that everybody rides. You had the one turning point that got you into the business, but then you found something in the business that was making, that was the most successful and that helped you pivot again. But when, when it mm -hmm. comes to the beginning, is there any other learning or anything else you took away from the beginning phase before you started your business that you, um, that you, yeah. go ahead. I think on a subconscious level, while I didn't let the lack of finance bother me, it was a turning point where I had to think about and say, well, how am I going to do this without money? How am I going to finance things? And as a result of that, once I launched as the publishing queen, it went into my training. Like I was teaching that just cash positive book publishing where you got paid to market your business instead of paying to do so, you know, turning marketing from a traditional business expense to a profit generating exercise. I was doing things like teaching pre-sale so you didn't actually ever spend a cent on the publishing process. You funded your publishing process out of someone else's pocket. I think because that's where I started, I wanted to make sure that no one had a limitation when they were starting their journey. Yeah, that, So and, indirectly. Yeah, and that's an epic point to bring up, just the fact of and, I, and that's what I love about this is the fact that you learn something right at that time at the beginning, right where you had to start making the change. And even though yeah. you did it on your own, you're not the type that, and we've talked a number of times, you're not the type or don't seem like the type to throw that back in people's faces. What you've done is instead of instead of judging people, instead of saying, look, I did it with no money, you can too. What you've done is you've come up with systems to say, I did it with no money, but you don't have to. You know, this is what I yep. went through. Now I've come exactly. up with stuff to prevent you from having to go through. Is that correct? Exactly. I um, believe strongly in the four E's, the easiest, most effective, most economical and most efficient way of doing absolutely anything. If it doesn't meet my four E's, I don't do it. And as a result, I'm constantly improving everything I do and everything I teach so that people never have to go do things the slow, hard, expensive way to not get the results they want, basically. Right. And you're such a low, you're such a low energy, calm type of person <laughs> that... <laughs> <laughs> sarcasm there's my sarcastic comment for the day but anyway so let's let's go ahead and get into the turning point raise your hand if you could use more clients now keep those hands up if you know that the best most efficient most effective way to to attract your ideal client is to create great client attracting content that connects with your ideal client and makes it easier for you to convert them into paying clients now, whether you have your hands up or have your hands down, I invite you to join me on the Create, Connect, and Convert Online Summit. It's where I and other people who are real-world practitioners of creating great client-attracting content are going to share our secrets with you. The summit is online. It runs Wednesday, April 13th through Saturday, April 23rd. You need to go out to the web address on your screen at this point, register to reserve your seat. And remember, you want to join us on the Create, Connect, and Convert Online Summit because creating content is how you spread your message, reach more people, and make a bigger difference. To watch the rest of this epic episode now, click on the link below the video. Do it now, you'll be glad you did. Are you still here? What are you waiting for? Watch the rest of this epic episode now by clicking on the link below the video.